Okay, we're going to talk about SketchUp tips and tricks, and one of the tips and tricks in SketchUp is to use the uh, guides or construction lines. And over here on your tool palette is the tape measure and the protractor, and those actually are, are very handy. They Not only do they measure, but they actually create guides. One thing I missed in uh, SketchUp when I had an AutoCAD was the ability to kind of draw a line. That's x-axis, no problem. You know, that's green axis. But if I wanted to line at 45 degrees, AutoCAD would just say, I could say at sign, you know, 20 feet at 45, and AutoCAD would put that angled line in there just like that. In SketchUp, the workflow is a little different. Um, you simply would click on the protractor tool here, then you would locate the protractor, and then you'd say the first starting point of my angle is on the red axis, for example. And then I want to come up 45 degrees. And by doing so, I've created a guide that's 45 degrees, and I simply take my pencil tool, and I can click on that and basically draw a line, you know, 20 feet, what have you. And I've just created a 20 foot line at 45 degrees. Any subsequent lines that I draw that are at that same angle, then I can basically go and say, I want to you know, start a line here. And what I'll do is I'll look for the purple line. And the purple line is SketchUp's way of saying that I'm parallel to something. And holding down my shift key, I can infer the endpoint of that. So these two are now the same length. And uh, <clears throat> so the protractor tool is very handy at creating those angled lines. So what I might want to do now is, let's go ahead and just erase this, is go through a little tutorial about how to actually draw a roof. So I'm going to erase that construction line. So I have this building, and I kind of use this same building in my uh, instant roof plug-in tutorial. And uh, so this building is a um, you know, building, and my, my goal will be to put a roof on that. So I'm going to use my offset tool to create my overhangs, and I'll just simply take that out. I'm going to say I've got a one foot overhang on this building. Now I'm going to take my push-pull tool, and I'm going to pull up the, the fascia. So I'm going to grab my push-pull tool and come up six inches. So basically I have the, the fascia there. So now I want to draw my, my roof in, and this house has a 812 pitch, or the goal is to have an 812 pitch. So what I do is I grab my protractor tool, and simply when it turns red, I'll just locate it here and I'll click and I'll come down my line of the roof or my red axis and I'll simply go up and I'm just going to type 8 colon 12 to indicate my goal is to have an 812 pitch. I'll do the same thing on the other side and I'll go here and I'll say 812 pitch again, 8 colon 12. Let me move my uh, this out of the way so you can see it, 812. One more time, whoops, one more time, 812. Okay, great, so now I've got the construction lines here, see that? I can just simply take my pencil tool and just go to where these intersect. I'll get the intersection tool tip, and then here, and I've created that face. It's very simple now just to push-pull that face across the other side of my building. So now on this narrower face, I need to draw my uh, the same concept. I'm going to take my protractor tool and I'm going to locate it here. I'm going to go down that. Come up once again 812 and 812. It's kind of nice that SketchUp actually puts the roof pitches in for you so you don't have to calculate out what that is. You know, 33 point something degrees. So now, um, you know, we have our, our our building, and I'm going to delete all our guides, and guides are nice because I can just say delete guides, and in one fell swoop, all the guides are gone. And now what I need to do is I need to create the hip roof here. So it's a pretty easy thing to push-pull this across. So I'll just push-pull that across the other side, and I want to stop where that roof is. Uh, but what we notice here is that these surfaces are not the same surface. In other words, if I click here, just that little triangle should highlight and not this whole other roof piece. So SketchUp gives us a very powerful tool called Intersecting Faces, and this is a good example when Intersecting Faces will come in. I'll just simply collect, select everything, right click, Intersecting Faces, and I'll say With Selection. So what SketchUp has done is see it's actually made this into an intersecting face with this face, so it's kind of cleaned up all this stuff in our model, which is really nice. So now, for example, when I want to draw the hip roof, this line basically would extend up to the roof line. 
So I'll simply grab my pencil tool and I'll click on the endpoint. And as I come up, I'll hover on that briefly and then I'll get my purple line. And my purple line, when it intersects the peak of the roof, is the same pitch as this line. And this line was the key to have SketchUp create this line for me. I'll do the same thing coming from where this line ends, coming down to this peak. And now I've got this roof surface se separated from the other roof, and I can simply delete this out. And I'll grab my erase tool and kind of you know go at it with the erase tool. And now, if I clean some of this up, you can see that I kind of have this roof surface. And actually, I don't need this anymore, so I should have left that one line here. And you'll see why. I'll clean this up and I'll clean that up. There we go. So now you see how I've transitioned this narrower roof into the broader roof by simply letting SketchUp help me. Um, and the last remaining thing that needs to be done to this roof for an example of how to use guides is to actually draw this side. And this side, you know, I really have, um, I don't have the benefit of having this, so the, the guides will come in handy once again. I'll grab my guides. And uh, one thing to notice is the guides and the rotate tool look exactly the same, only the rotate tool won't create the guides and will rotate geometry. And the guides will create a guide, so don't accidentally grab this one and that one, but so grab the protractor. And I'm going to look for the green, and I'll come here, I'll go down to the, the side of the roof, and I'll come up, and once again I'll type 8 colon 12, and I'll get an 812 pitch, and I'll go on the other side and create a guide. And I'll click and click 812. So now what I need to do is just create a temporary surface. So I'll take my pencil and start here and I'll go right up that guide and it's saying hey that's 36 feet so I'll just say 40 feet. It doesn't really matter. And so I'm creating a surface that I can cut with and when I use intersecting faces. So I'll go across the green then I'll come back down and select here and now I have a face that cuts into my roof exactly where that cut line should be. So here again I'm going to delete my guides. Uh, I'm going to select my house with the crossing window, not a smooth window. And I'm going to say intersecting faces with selection. And now I can simply take my eraser and start erasing away some of this that I don't need anymore. And here again I can erase this, this, and this. And there you have it. <coughs> Pretty quick way using guides to actually create roofs and create angle lines that you can you know, use for your purpose. Um, you know, to kind of finish it off, I can select this, right click, make group, and then I can take my material and shingles and do a shingle roof. And just like that, you can create a pretty quick roof, you know, complete with the overhang and everything. So um, this is the manual way to do it. The uh, other video that I did at the same time shows how to do the same roof with instant roof. Either way is good, uh, whichever workflow works the best for you. Hey, thanks for watching.